Hi everyone, my name is Lewis, I'm from Revisto, and today I'm going to be showing you how we can use Revisto 5's new functionality to start tracking progress on site. In this example, it will be tracking site progress for concrete pours, but it could be anything really. You could use this process to mark areas that have been signed off from the design team, or trade contractors could mark areas that they have finished working in, allowing the next trade to move in and complete their work. In this session, we'll be showing you how you can isolate the relevant components in the model using cert sets. We'll then be looking at using the Revisto's custom parameter tool to add data into these components, which can then be used using the Revisto appearance profile to change the colors to highlight what's been completed and what's not. We will then show you this process on a tablet so that you can take this out onto site. We have made some assumptions um, for this session. Um, firstly, that not every trade contractor is going to be producing models. So for the examples that I'm giving, we are using design models um, in their place. Um, and just as a bit of a disclaimer, like Revisto is not a site tracking tool. This process is just to help you visualize progress quickly um, and easily within Revisto. And also it's just worth bearing in mind that not all design models will be modeled based on construction methodologies. So concrete pore sequences are not going to be modeled in a design model. So we're going to have to take um, some artistic license here and show the pore sequence as best we can with the models that we have available to us. Um, the process is really quick and easy, so hopefully it's worth doing to, to get that result. So let's jump in and start this process off. So first of all, I'm going to go to the 3D space. And now what we need to do is we need to isolate out all the concrete elements from within the structural model. The easiest way for us to do this is to use our find items and then create a search set from that data. So I'm going to go to find items. We're going to add a condition as a property condition. And first things first, I'm going to choose the correct model. So I'm going to choose source file. And from this option, I'm going to choose the structural model. I can find all and isolate just to check that I'm picking up the right information, which I am. And now what we need to do is we need to get rid of the um, steelwork and any other components that are not part of the concrete process. So to get rid of the steelwork from this model, I need to add another condition in to do this. So I'm going to add a condition, property condition, I'm going to type in structural material, structural material from the material list. And I'm going to do equals, and there's only one concrete, so I can select that one from the list. I can do find all. I can isolate just to check that it's working. In this situation, I can see that the slabs are not being picked up and neither are the walls. Um, so if I undo that, we can get those back. And the reason that this is happening is because the slabs and the walls do not have the material property. Um, instead, I want to use the rubber type for those ones. So to do this, I'm going to get rid of this property condition and I'm now going to add a group for the find objects. So we can add a group. I can add a condition in here. I'll do a property condition. Again, we'll do structural material. So we'll do the material option equals, again, the concrete option. We can then add another condition. And again, I'm going to choose structural material, but this time I'm going to take it from the Revit types option. And again, we'll choose the concrete in situ for this purpose. I'm going to change this to an or statement. So what a group does is it now it looks for this, all this, and this one. So it's now giving me that sort of option to look for different properties with the data and then use it with the first one. So if I do find all now and isolate, we can see that it's now instantly picked all the concrete in the model. So I now know that I've got the information selected that I want. Um, this is a really good place to start. So we then save this search set. So I'm going to save as new and we're going to just call this um, concrete or structural. And I'll save that. Now that the search set has been created, we can activate it to show that it's been picked. And now we can look at adding the custom property to these components. The process to do this is pretty straightforward. So we can go to our properties. And then here we've got multiple objects selected. So I can now add a, add a custom property to this directly. We can start giving it a category. So in this case, we're going to call this um, site progress. The property is going to be called concrete pour complete. I can give it a data type. In this case, it's going to be a text. And the default value I'm going to apply to everything is going to be no, because we've not been out on the site yet to check to see whether or not it's been completed. We can say okay to this one. 
And now when I select any uh, object in the model, we can see we've got a custom property here called site progress. If I expand that, we can see that is now set to null. And as I click through the different objects, that's been applied to everything all in one go. So now every concrete object in the model has this property with the default status of null. The next thing we want to do before we go out to site is set up the view template for this one to allow us to change the visibility of the model um, easily without any effort. So we're going to go to our appearance profiles. Um, in this case here, I'm going to get rid of all my default settings and I'm going to select my concrete um, all structural and we're going to right click and we're going to isolate that. And that's now been added to this view. We can now start to add a rule to this to start coloring based on the results of the custom property. So I'm going to add a rule. I go um, property condition. In here, we can call this concrete pour complete. So there's my option there. And we can give it an option. So we've only got no at the moment. So we're going to say no. And our, op our option, our operation here will be to change the color of everything that's set to no to be red. So we can okay that. If I apply that, it's now going to change everything to red. I'm also going to add the other conditions in now before we've actually applied the parameters. So we can come in here and we can again search for concrete pour. And the value that we're going to put in here is going to be in progress. And if it's in progress, we're going to set the color for this one to be orange. And we'll add one more where the property condition is concrete pour equals uh, yes. So I'm just going to type in yes into here. And again, the operation will be to make it colorful. We're going to make it a bright green color and we're going to OK. When I apply this, nothing's going to happen because obviously everything meets that no requirement as it is at the moment. So everything is set to red. But I can now save this. I'm going to save this as a new appearance template and call this my concrete pour progress and then click OK. And now we can take this out onto site with a tablet and show you how we edit that custom property and how the appearance template will automatically update to show the areas where we completed the concrete pour or it's in progress. Before we can take this out on site, we need to make sure that the Cert set that we're using for the appearance profiles has been shared. So we've got the concrete all structural. We need to make sure this has been shared with the rest of the team. And to do this, we first of all need to create a folder. Um, I'm going to call this folder site progress. I can just drag the um, cert set into that folder. And I can select the folder and just share it. Um, or share it this way. And that's now been shared. So everyone on the project can now see that cert set. And it's also important that the appearance template that we made um, has been shared as well. So to do that, we just right click and then we go share. Now, everything that we've set up for the appearance profiles is available to everybody on the project, which means that they can access it and operate it when they need to, including out on the tablets. So now here I am on my tablet, I can open the project. In Revisto 5, it always asks you which models you want to load before opening so that you can control um, how many models and the performance is going to be improved. So I'm going to load the files in here that I need. Um, we've shared those appearance templates. So when I go to the appearance template within Revisto 5, which you can see up here in the toolbar, this one here, um, I've got my concrete pour progress. I can click on the arrow to activate it. And again, it's going to automatically change the color of the objects to be red because that's the criteria that we've got. So now I want to show you how we can edit that information within Revisto. So I'm going to close down the appearance profile for the moment. I'm going to open up the properties and we're then going to sort of start zooming in on some objects. And I'm just going to pick one object at the moment to start with. Now that we've got that component selected, we can see in the properties the site progress parameter. I can expand that. And here we can see concrete pour complete stated as no. I can click on the arrow. I can then click on the three dots and we can say edit custom property. The only option that I can change is the actual value. I can't change the category or the property name. That has to be done elsewhere. But if I want to change the value, we can just come in here and edit this. And for this instance, I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to say OK. And that's now been updated in that property. If I click on another object, you can see that it still says no because we haven't changed it. I can multi-edit on the iPad as well. So I can long hold 
on the screen. Down the bottom, you see enter multi-select mode. So I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna select a few more components. Down the bottom here, it says two items selected. If I click on that, we can say show custom properties. And now it's showing the two components that I've got selected and the fact that it shares the site progress option. Again, I can select that from the list. I can edit custom property and I'm gonna change no in this case to in progress and okay that and okay that and then show custom properties they're both in progress so now when i select the come out of this sorry and then uh, unselect all i can select the object here and then the properties that's set to in progress in progress and the item over here is set to concrete pour complete yes at the moment everything is still um, red but if we reactivate the um, <clears throat> the appearance template I'm just going to go home to do this and then go back to my appearance template um, and then click on that one and then instantly now we can see that the objects that we changed now meet those requirements and have automatically changed color so we've now got um, the components on the screen showing up as green and orange for saying that yes it's been poured and it's currently in progress so we can now go out on site with our tablets, go around and have a look at the different components. We can edit the custom property directly on the tablet and that will automatically update for everyone um, within the project. So just to show you what I mean, I'm gonna go back to my computer version now. And I'm now here on the PC version. That's now just picked up the changes that we made on the tablet. If I now activate the concrete pour progress again, Again, it's automatically going to pick up those color changes. So instantly, we've now been able to track progress from site on a tablet really quickly and really easily. But it definitely makes sense to set it up in the first place on the PC version. It's just going to be easier to do that um, just because the screen's bigger, you've got the mouse and the keyboard, and it's just something that you're more familiar with. But to edit the custom property out on site on the tablet, really simple. Um, it's no different on the PC. So again, I can select any component on the model. We go to the properties and here we've got concrete pour complete. This time I can just right click and we can say edit custom property. And again, I can change this to be yes if I want to say okay. And then again, we reactivate just by going home and then applying the template again. And that's now changed color. So it's really easy, really quick to start tracking that progress on the projects with very little effort. So finally, just to review what we've covered today, um, the first thing that we did was we did a search for our concrete elements. Um, this was done using, first of all, selecting a model um, and then a group to do an OR statement so that it found all the different types of concrete within that model. Uh, we then saved this as a search set. We then made sure that that search set was shared on the project so that everyone could see it. Um, we then came into the components and we added a custom property to it. And so that we applied a generic no across the board for all the concrete elements when we asked concrete pour complete. Um, we then create an appearance template, um, which first of all, isolated out the cert set. It then looked for the different values that could be entered in for the concrete pour complete and changed the color of them. Um, and then we saved that as an appearance template and we shared that with everyone on the project so they could all see it. We then switched over to the iPad and then we found the components we looked in the properties, we saw the custom property, and then we edited that, um, changed it from no to yes or in progress. And then the moment that we reactivated the appearance template, the colors update automatically showing us the progress on site. Um, and in general, I've shown you it for concrete pores, but this can be used for a lot of different purposes. So yeah, I hope you found it interesting. Uh, if you have any questions, please let us know. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for your time and speak soon.